Hi, in this video we're going to go over some of the basics of cell structure. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about uh, what cells are and what cell theory is. We're going to also talk about what is the limit to cell size, and then we're going to look at some of the cellular organelles um, and what they actually do inside of the cell. So first of all, the cell theory is essentially um, stating that all cells come from other cells. I know this doesn't seem like um, anything quite um, revolutionary or anything, but it really w at its time was quite um, a very interesting topic and it is one of the unifying themes of um, biology. Um, so the idea that all cells have to arise from other cells and that all living things are comprised of cells does say something about the nature uh, of life. So the three principles are that all organisms are composed of one or more cells um, and the processes of metabolism and hereditary, heredity occur uh, within these cells. Uh, it also states that cells are the smallest living organisms and that cells only arise by division of previously existing cells. So you may notice that cells tend to be pretty small. There are some exceptions to this, but for the most part, all cells are going to be microscopic. Now, the reason this is has to do with the diffusion of things into and out of the cell. If you have a large cell, like this guy over here on the right, things that have to diffuse into here and diffuse out, such as oxygen diffusing in and CO2 diffusing out, the bigger it is, uh, the harder it's going to be for things to diffuse into it uh, evenly and it's going to take more time. So you get more uh, um, for more money for your buck or more bang for your buck if you go with a smaller cell size. Now there is a limit to this size that's small. You need to make sure that cells are big enough that they can actually contain uh, the things within them, the nucleus um, and the DNA and the uh, DNA molecules. So there is a limit to how small they can be. Um, so the, by making cells small, you're really optimizing the surface area to volume ratio. So you can see here I have a cell radius in units 1, 2, 5, or 10. And as you go down, uh, or as you increase in cell radius, the surface area to volume ratio is going to be uh, decreasing. So the more surface area to volume ratio, the better it is going to be for the diffusion of things into and out of the cell. All right, so uh, cells do come in a wide variety of types, especially when you go uh, and look at prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. But there are going to be some features that are common uh, among all cells. So all cells are going to have DNA. They're going to have the hereditary heredity um, hereditary material of the cell. So this is what it, uh, really is going to store the information in the cell about how um, to make new cells and then you can replicate it and um, have these different functions. It stores information for running the cell as well. Uh, all cells also have ribosomes. So DNA is pretty useless without ribosomes. DNA must be read to make um, RNA, which uh, the RNA then needs to be read by the ribosomes to make proteins. So ribosomes are uh, going to be responsible for making um, the proteins in the cell. Um, all cells will have a cytoplasm. Uh, so if you actually look at a cytoplasm, it's more of like a jello-like material that is going to have the organelle suspended uh, within it. And then all cells also have a plasma membrane to separate the uh, inside of the cell from the outside of the cell. Now cells come in two major flavors, uh, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Uh, prokaryotic means before um, a nucleus, so these are cells that don't have uh, a nucleus. They're much uh, more simpler in how they are actually put um, together. So if you think of um, cells as like a housing unit, uh, prokaryotic cells would more be like a studio apartment where everything's out in the open, uh, your kitchen is, there's no wall separating it from the bedroom, um, everything's just out there, there's no compartment separating it. 
so the DNA is not actually going to be in a nucleus. It's going to be in a nucleoid region. Um, it's still going to have the ribosomes because they're not, uh, not membrane-bound um, organelles. Um, it's going to have a cellular uh, membrane, a plasma membrane, but it probably oftentimes will have um, a cell wall too. Most uh, prokaryotic cells do, um, with only a few exceptions that we know of. And it, usually there might be other things too, like a flagellum that helps it move. Um, there might be a capsule that um, it allows it to do other uh, prokaryotic functions, but they're fairly simple um, and everything's just kind of going on inside of here. Eukaryotic cells tend to be bigger, um, among about 10 times the size. Um, if you actually compared a prokaryotic cell to a eukaryotic cell, it'd be about the size of a mitochondria. So that's what this orange thing um, is inside of it. Um, you'll notice that there are uh, little, um, or that there are organelles that are separating the different functions. So while everything's going uh, on everywhere in here, um, eukaryotic cells can get a little bit bigger because they have membranes that are compartmentalizing things. So it's like having a house with different rooms where you go to the bathroom in one room and you would uh, make dinner in the kitchen and you'd sleep in another room. Each of these compartments have different functions and it helps the cell manage itself um, better so that you can have a larger uh, cell size. So let's look at some of the features of eukaryotic cells. So when I talk about prokaryotic cells, I'm talking about um, bacteria and um, archaea. When I'm talking about eukaryotic cells, these are going to be more of the multicellular organisms that you're, you would think of, although there are protists that fall into this category as well. So animal cells, plant cells, uh, fungi cells would all fall into this category. Uh, so the first feature of a animal cell that we want to look at is the nucleus. So the nucleus is going to be the organelle that contains um, the DNA. And that's what that green stuff right here uh, represents. Uh, the nucleus will also contain a region uh, known as the nucleolus. Uh, this is a region where you're having um, RNA being uh, made. Uh, so it's an area where the genes are actually being expressed and it'll tend to stain darker uh, within the cell. Now, all of this ins inside uh, the nucleus, which has actually two membranes. It has just the normal membrane and a nuclear envelope. Um, and then within the nucleus, you also have pores that's going to allow for the passage of material inside and out of the uh, membrane. Now, continuous with the uh, outer nuclear envelope is going to be the endomembrane system. So the endomembrane system is going to be a system of different organelles, which includes the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, um, the Golgi apparatus, uh, various uh, vacuoles and microbodies as well, um, and lysosomes. So these are going to be all the main compartments um, of the cell that are going to have different functions. Um, it's not part of the endomembrane system, however, are the mitochondria. Um, they're going to be their own specialized function that we'll talk about them um, later. So if we move out from here and look at this organelle right here, this is the rough ER. Now, the rough ER has ribosomes. I tried to emphasize the R right there, um, which gives it, it its rough appearance. Um, so the rough endoplasmic reticulum is going to be the organelle that's responsible for making um, proteins that end up either in the membrane or stored within other um, organelles itself. You notice that there are ribosomes within the cytoplasm itself. So um, there's ribosomes are going to be the organelles that make the proteins. Um, the cytoplasmic uh, uh, ribosomes are going to make cytoplasmic proteins, so uh, proteins found in the cytoplasm. The uh, ribosomes that are in the endoplasmic reticulum, these proteins that get made get stored or put on the plasma membrane uh, of the cell. So they get stored in um, other organelles. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum um, actually has a lot of different functions. Um, so it can act as a calcium storage area. Um, it can be used for cal uh, um, carbohydrate and lipid metabolism um, and synthesis. 
Uh, it can also be used um, to help detoxify things. So it contain, can contain enzymes that are, are responsible for um, breaking down different substances that might be uh, toxic to a cell. Now the Golgi apparatus, um, it, it sort of s functions as a post office. So uh, vesicles, which are what these little small things uh, here are, they can actually break off from the endoplasmic reticulum and can move throughout the cell. And a lot of the proteins, especially that are made in the rough ER, actually will go to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus then is going to sort them. It might modify them in some way, so mark it uh, mark them for being located uh, to a different place in the cell. It's then going to have the um, the microbodies, the vacuoles, um, the microbodies uh, come off of the cell and go to other places in the cell um, after it's been marked. Um, so it really acts as a packaging center, sort of a, as a post office in the cell. Um, other organelles, so you're going to have the peroxisomes, uh, which can be uh, responsible for um, lipid catabolism, so it breaks down lipids. Uh, they're called peroxisomes because they produce hydrogen peroxide and so have to have um, these peroxidases that help break that down and manage it within the cell. Uh, you can also have lysosomes, so remember um, that hydrolysis was breaking things down, so lys means to cut. Lysosomes are going to break down different Thing. So a lysosome might actually engulf um, a bacteria or other food that the um, cell has um, taken in and help break that down for the cell. Or it might um, engulf uh, worn out organelles, break them down, and recycle and reuse them um, later in the cell. Um, again, we'll come back to the mitochondria here shortly. If we contrast an animal cell with a plant cell, you'll notice that a plant cell has everything that an animal cell ha has plus a few extras. So they'll have chloroplasts, which are going to be responsible for capturing um, sunlight energy and then storing it within organic molecules within the cell. Um, they also have a large central vacuole, which um, actually contains water and a lot of other substances. Um, so you could think of this as sort of a storage place um, so it can store waste, but mostly it's going to be storing water and other things that the cell um, uses. And this can actually um, help with the cell maintaining uh, turgidity and how, um, how much water it is so that it's not uh, being withered or something. Uh, when you let plant cells uh, dry out, they become very withered. Um, this can help maintain the cell by storing uh, water within the cell. All right, so back to the mitochondria. There's something special about the mitochondria and the chloroplast. So mitochondria and chloroplast both have uh, double membranes, um, and they also both have uh, DNA that's separate from the nuclear DNA, and they also have ribosomes uh, found within them as well. Now, the mitochondria and the chloroplast are both uh, involved in energy metabolism. Uh, so we'll talk about the mitochondria in much more detail when we get to cellular respiration. So it's going to be responsible for um, utilizing uh, the metabolites from carbohydrate, lipid, and protein uh, catabolism to produce ATP, the energy currency of the cell. Um, and it, its function is important for this. Um, so you have the outer membrane. Um, you have this inner membrane space within here, and then you'll have the inner membrane, um, it, the inner membrane, which um, has a um, other materials within it. So um, this inner membrane part is known as the uh, matrix. Um, we're going to see when we get to carbohydrate metabolism just how this all works together to help us produce ATP. And the chloroplast is going to, there's going to be a lot of similarities between the mitochondria and the chloroplast. So still a double membrane. Um, the chloroplast is actually going to have these specialized um, granules and uh, granul granums um, that are going to be used. Um, now the space here uh, within, uh, while it was the matrix in the uh, mitochondria, this is a stroma. 
Um, there's going to be this inner membrane space again, um, and it's going to have a very similar function to um, the mitochondria, as you'll see. And they're going to both be um, functioning in the um, metabolism of the cell. Uh, finally, uh, I want to talk about some of the cytoskeletal elements. So um, you may have thought of the uh, cell as just having a bunch of uh, cytoskeletal or a bunch of organelles um, just kind of drifting in a jelly. And uh, when you have an assignment like make a, uh, a cell out of a jello food, um, this kind of perpetuates this myth. But if you zoom in closely on this, what you will actually see is that um, there's actually a lot of proteins here uh, that make up the cytoskeleton that are going to be holding all of these organelles together and helping uh, with moving them. In fact, uh, if you look at some of these cytoskeletal elements, there's actually going to be proteins that um, can help walk the different organelles uh, on the plasma membrane. So it's not just a jello with everything kind of drifting free, um, but it's actually a um, a very organized structure thanks to the cytoskeletal elements. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in class.